average amount of malicious packets uploaded to it is 22 packets. Daily average of 22 malicious packets. That's around 2% of the total packets uploaded daily to NPM. Malicious actors are polluting on a regular basis the popular package registries. What can we do about it? As Abraham Lincoln said, the best way to defeat your enemy is by making him a friend. And today we'll try to do it. In the next 30 minutes, we'll fully analyze the latest trends in malicious package and compare them to the overall evolution of general malware. We'll forecast likely future events around this area and review key tactics to combat these growing threats by analyzing lessons learned from security solutions built for general malware. My name is Daniel Cabez. I'm a vulnerability research team leader and open source security thought leader at MEND, formerly known as White Source. For the past decade, I'm working at the cybersecurity industry, starting by being all around there, doing some forensics, incident response, building stuff. Then later on, I focused on leading malware research and vulnerability research teams. You probably remember the time when malwares were commonly referred with the term viruses incorrectly. At least that's what I remember from the late 1990s and the start of the odds. Back then, when you talked with a friend and he told you about a new virus which infected his machine, you were scared it might infect you too. And we've seen people who downloaded stuff from those informal or less known sources who were infected with those viruses. And as the cyberspace developed exponentially, instead of seeing the same exponential growth of those malwares, we've seen some migration of attackers focused toward organizations instead of to individuals' machine. In package registries these days, we're seeing some features of those early days of malwares, where attackers are testing stuff. They are trying some basic malicious techniques or attacking everyone who downloads the package from those informal or less known developers, which is quite similar to those early days of malwares. What we'll have in the session today. You're familiar with malwares in general and how to counter them, so you might know more than you think about malicious packages. And even if you aren't familiar with malwares, at the end of this session, you'll know a lot more about malicious packages and malicious techniques by digging into the technical details and seeing the similarities and differences of malicious packets compared to uh, the overall malware evolution, we can predict where is this thing heading. Let's start from the beginning. The first malicious package discussed on NPM blog was in 2017. It was a set of 37 malicious packages created by one malicious actor. And it was only one year after security Good? Good to go? Okay. So as I was saying, it was the very beginning of malicious package in package registries. And 
this is quite an old package from you know the the beginning of all this uh, talk, and except from how the attacker manipulated the user uh, to download this malicious package, what the attacker did once the package was on the machine. So the attacker just used the script section of the package JSON file to execute the main JS file of the package. This script section is used either by a developer or attackers to run almost any script in the installation of a package, either pre-install, post-install. In this case, it's a post-install. Then he's using free techniques to achieve his malicious intention. He's creating a post request. And, okay, creating a post request. He's running process env command to pull user environment variables, which contains information such as um, username, host name, home dear, and in some circumstances, it might contain some environment variables such as keys, tokens, or passwords. And then he's using base64 encoding, but in this case, it's not as a hiding or evasion technique. It's just as a way to transfer data stream across the network. So this, as I mentioned, is quite an old package. So we might ask now, is that what we're seeing in recent days? That we're seeing in you know, uh, quite a new malicious package? Let's check. So on the slide, we're seeing the NPM readme page of a malicious package found in the wild recently. It has such a new documentation, right? Well, if you look closely, you'll see it's just Latin or gibberish text, which really doesn't mean anything. It just looks legitimate for a glance. The attacker is using the lorm ipsum uh, technique, which is known in the publishing or in graphic design as a, um, text, placeholder text, which tries to demonstrate the visual form of a document without relying on any meaningful text. And then he added some illustration, which again looks legitimate for a quick lens. Except from that, the attacker is using two evasion techniques in this case. He's using uh, hex encoding to evade some uh, static uh, detection security tools, and in addition, he's creating some delayed execution of the malicious code to about one hour after initial uh, installation to evade some dynamic detection security tools. So similar to the previous package that we just seen, the attacker is trying to exfiltrate user private information. And uh, in this case, he's doing it via a DNS webhook, via two known web, uh, via, sorry, a DNS lookup to two known webhooks, pipedream.net and requestbin.net then he's sending private information, which is a username, host name, machine name, list of files under the home directory, and list of IP addresses configured on the current host. So this is giving us a perspective of the main trend in the malicious packets over the years. Now, before I'm losing you by digging into more technical details, I, I want to jump to the most interesting part. The trends analysis of malicious packets compared to the overall malware evolution. On the next slides, we'll see a visualization of the three main attributes related to any kind of malwares, which are attack vector, malicious techniques, and the objective or the malicious intention of the package, or general malware. Starting with malicious package trends. So on the slide, we're seeing the attack vector of malicious package, and for each year, there is a colorful dot which tries to demonstrate how common it was on the same year. And I'll start here with a quick recap of the attack vectors, uh, just to differentiate what each one means. So we have brand jacking, which is a way of um, acquires or assuming, um, attacker requires or otherwise assumes the online identity of a company, product, or an owner of a package, um, then inserting malicious code. It doesn't necessarily mean he is actively stealing something, but just taking advantage of an opportunity related to the brand name. Next we have dependency hijacking, which occurs when an attacker obtains control of a public repository, then inserting a new malicious version. We have typo squatting, which occurs when an attacker will release a new malicious version to a public repository, um, 
<clears throat> in, in the hope that a developer will mistype the popular package name uh, that he meant to pull and will pull the uh, type of squatted malicious package instead. And lastly, we have dependency confusion, which is, uh, uh, again, occurring when an attacker releases a new malicious version to a new malicious package to a public repository uh, with the same name as uh, some internal package of a company. And it depends on a risky feature or a vulnerability, depends who are in the community. Some, some consider it as a vulnerability, others consider it as a risky feature. Either way, when the uh, developer pulling uh, the company or developer pulling the internal package name, it will fetch, due to this risky feature, the uh, public package instead. So what we're seeing on the slides uh, in the trend on uh, those years, we are seeing two, two attack vectors which are the most common, which are typo squatting and brand jacking, which follow us through the years. And except from that, we're seeing dependency hijacking and dependency confusion, which has much narrow impact on the community. And although they are, they are related to brand jacking or considered as a subtype of brand jacking, I decided to put them here on different spots because First, as I mentioned, they have much more impact on the community. And in addition, dependency hijacking is more often actively stealing. And dependency confusion, as I mentioned, is a vulnerability or risky feature which some of their dependency management tools already implemented some mitigation for this. Moving to the malicious techniques of malicious packages. So here we have another layer which we can review over the years, which is the expertise level. Uh, which we'll see on the next slides too. And we can see that related to evasion techniques in this case, uh, which attackers in the last few years in malicious package started to use some intermediate evasion techniques, in addition to the basic evasion techniques that they are using currently. And except from that, we aren't seeing much of a change uh, over the years. We are seeing that the usage volume or the popularity of those um, malicious techniques have raised. But it is in correlation to the general growth of the package registries over those years. And you know, there are a few rare cases of persistence techniques that are being utilized, but you can count them on one or two hands. Objective of malicious package. So here we have three objectives. Um, again, two of them are the most common one, which are reconnaissance and stealing private information. And by reconnaissance, I refer to any act of gathering information which can be manipulated or, sorry, can be monetized uh, through a direct uh, individual. And in addition to that, we're seeing crypto mining under crypto malware world. And it has a narrow impact uh, than the other two, much less popular than the other two. And a few more unique things that we've seen on the last year which aren't mentioned on this slide is first is protestware. Protestware is a malicious software, usually not related to any monetization. It just derives from you know, ideological reasons um, as a vandalism act. And another thing that's emerged or have a lot of uh, popularity in the last year is under stealing private information. There we are seeing a lot of attackers trying to steal Discord premium accounts. And for those who aren't familiar, Discord is a social communication platform. We're moving to malware trends, starting with the attack vectors. So here we have informal source usage and social engineering, which are the most popular. Um, informal source usage is when, uh, you know, uh, any act of uh, engaging with a site, company, or a product which clearly doesn't have enough uh, re reputation to back up his legitimacy. And social engineering is um, a an act of uh, manipulating a user to or via um, human interactions, which is, you know, relates mainly to phishing that we're seeing these days. Phishing occurs, as you know, for sure, via SMS, uh, social network, uh, emails, and I think but under phishing, I think the most uh, popular thing, popular attack vector, is probably to do this via advertising. Advertising exists like everywhere, 
even on legitimate places. This is also referred with the term malvertising. And I think it is one of the most undervalued attack vectors under phishing these days. Um, except from that, we're seeing, of course, vulnerable services and brand jacking, which are still with us all this time, but have, they are much less popular than the other two. We're moving to the malicious techniques of malware. And here we can see, I think, from a quick lens that there is something different from other slides that we reviewed. There is a development of the expertise over the years in general malware, of course. We're seeing that attackers these days are using advanced evasion techniques, advanced persistence techniques, advanced deployment, communication, or execution techniques, which is under environment control. And on top of that, they are even using a vulnerability exploitation to enhance their capabilities on the machine. Next is the objective of general malware. And I think on this slide, nothing is a big surprise. We're hearing all over the news every day about a new ransomware attack, a new um, a crypto miner or crypto stealing that occurred, and where credential or credit card stealing. And we are seeing that ransomware, crypto malware, are the most popular. And in addition to them, we are seeing adwares. Which adwares, it's not malvertising or the advertising attack vector, which I mentioned a couple of slides ago. It is a malicious software intended to inject ads, usually to your browser. And it is one of the top objectives currently for general malware. And on the other hand, like, like it is a top objective for the cyber criminals, but again, for the, and on the other hand, for uh, users or for the security community, it is one of the most undervalued uh, objective or uh, something that uh, the community give it enough uh, attention. It is one of the silent uh, objective currently for cyber criminals. In addition to those, we are seeing bots and stealing private information, which are still a part of the objectives for malware these days. So we reviewed all the malicious techniques, uh, attack vectors, objectives, both for malware and for the malicious package. Now we can easily put them side by side and see what we're learning from this, what, what we're seeing from this comparison. So starting with the attack vector comparison, we're seeing on the malicious package side dependency confusion compared to vulnerable services. As I mentioned, it is either a risky feature or a vulnerability. And th this is the place that it sits in this comparison. Next, we have dependency hijacking and brand jacking compared to brand jacking in general malware. And it was of the un one of the unique cases where malicious package attack vector has surpassed in popularity when we are comparing to general malware. But don't be confused, it is just on the how it is popular, not, not in the way of you know, the expertise level that they are using in the malicious package. Next, we have type of squatting, which is compared to informal source usage and social engineering. And if you ask why, it's because type of squatting should just check who is the owner behind this package. You'll clearly see that it's not someone legitimate. And regarding social engineering, because it depends on the faulty human interaction, Ty mistyping the popular package name that we wanted to get. What we're learning from this? We're seeing that we should expect an increase in vulnerable services and in social engineering in the few years to come. And by vulnerable services, I refer to the dependency management tools. There we will see um, attackers finding more vulnerabilities and by that exploiting them and uploading more malicious packages. And regarding social engineering in general, we will see attackers utilizing more techniques in the near future. Malicious techniques comparison. So here we are seeing from a quick lens a few holes on the malicious package side, but starting with evasion. So attackers these days in malicious packages are using quite basic or you know, few intermediate evasion techniques like, as we've seen before, base64 encoding, uh, hex encoding, delayed execution. And we, when we are comparing it to what is happening in general malware, 
there we are seeing advanced evasion techniques being utilized on a regular basis on almost every malware. We are seeing um, anti-VM, anti-reverse engineering, files and registries queries, and the list for advanced evasion techniques in general malwares are very long. Persistence. I don't know why, but attackers in malicious packages are very persistent by continually releasing new malicious packages to the package registries that we love, um, but they aren't using any persistence techniques in the malicious package that they are sharing. Uh, again, there are a few exceptions, but you really can count them on one or two hands. And when we are comparing it to general uh, malware, we are seeing that attackers are using advanced persistent techniques. They are using scheduled tasks and browser extensions. And again, the list for advanced persistent techniques that are being utilized in uh, general malwares are very long. Vulnerability exploitation. So in malicious packages, we are seeing attackers gathering information re related to vulnerabilities but we aren't actually seeing them exploiting them. And when, again, we are comparing it to what is happening in general malware, we are seeing attackers using a lot of vulnerability exploitation to enhance or to um, get a get better grasp on the network or the machine that they infected. And lastly, for this comparison, we have environment control, which related to um, the uh, communication, execution, deployment on the machine that we are seeing in general malware, advanced techniques that are very hard to detect, analyze, or to counter after uh, the, the machine was infected with the malware. And comparing to what is happening on malicious package where we are seeing network basic network communication techniques being utilized all the time, print, post, install, script, shell commands, and we're seeing something repetitive, something that's happened again and again, which is quite easy to detect or to counter or to analyze. And that's quite it. And what we are learning from this comparison. So we are learning that for evasion, we should expect that attacker will use more advanced techniques. And it will happen sooner than we think regarding evasion. For persistence, well, maybe not advanced persistence for start, but we will see attackers utilizing persistent techniques more commonly in malicious packages. Vulnerability exploitation. It is one of the hardest things to achieve. So, and you know, it's not much useful in all this, in the general circumstances. So we might see attackers utilizing some vulnerability exploitation, but it will happen like when a new vulnerability, which is Wide, in a widely popular product, which is easy to exploit, will emerge uh, like you know, a, a new log for shell attack vulnerability. Sorry. And lastly, we have environment control. There we will see attackers using more diverse attacks, more methods, more advanced methods in the near future. Objective is next. So again, we have a few holes on the malicious package side where we are not seeing much or it, even at all some of the uh, objectives uh, that we're seeing in general malware. So ransomware. I think we've seen like one or two in the last five years cases of ransomware in malicious packets, but it can be compared to what is happening in general malware, where attackers are seeing the huge incentive behind ransomware and implementing, you know, and it is one of the top objectives in general malware. Crypto malware compared to crypto mining. So in general malware attackers are utilizing or trying to get the malicious intentions of crypto stealing and crypto mining. And it is the, one of the top objectives of the general malwares, of cyber criminals in general malware. And on malicious package, we are mainly seeing crypto mining, which you know is currently is a bit uh, less, um, less popular. It is, have less incentive behind it, uh, crypto mining these days, because crypto stealing is much more easier and you are gaining a lot more. So we are seeing mainly crypto mining in malicious packages and a few cases of crypto stealing. Next, we have AdWords, which we aren't really seeing in malicious packages. And again, it is a top uh, objective for general malware. And we have bots, which we are seeing a few rare cases on malicious packages. 
And lastly is stealing private information, sitting with reconnaissance and compared to the general stealing private information of general malware. And again, we have one of the unique cases where this uh, objective is surpassing by popularity for the malicious package. And you know, for, for reconnaissance, we aren't even seeing that on general malware. And it is because it clearly doesn't have enough incentive behind it. And it, is, it will probably be one of the things that we will see a decrease of popularity in the future in malicious packages. So what we're learning from this comparison? We're learning that regarding ransomware, attackers will understand what, what is the obstacles in their path in implementing it currently in package registries, because it has a huge incentive behind it. So they will figure out, you know, in this cat and mouse game of attackers versus the security community, how to achieve this uh, in some malicious package in the future. Crypto jacking. So, and specifically crypto jacking, we will see an increase of the popularity of it. And again, it is, I mentioned it in the last slide, it has more incentive than crypto mining. We'll see either a migration of crypto miners to crypto stealing, or in addition to that, we'll see it more popular uh, objective. And lastly, we have adware, which is not the easiest thing to achieve in um, malicious package, you know, in package registries because eventually those packages are used in developer environment, in the back end. So it is not so close you know, to the end user that's using this uh, in a daily basis, the, brow the browser, and you know, this is the most convenient uh, place for AdWords. So we might see it in, uh, in the near future, we will see it in the near future, but it won't be a top objective for attackers and malicious packages. Summarizing the malicious trends, the, the problem side. So what we are seeing from our, our analysis today is that attackers in malicious packages or malicious packages, when they are compared to general malware, they are, are very similar. And um, you know, it is quite, quite obvious. It is quite, uh, um, quite an obvious thing uh, because eventually both of them are malwares. Uh, it's just a new attack surface. But we're seeing in our analysis today that what the work that is happening currently in malicious packages, uh, the malicious techniques, attack vectors, their objective is much more similar to what happened in the general malware years ago or even a decade ago. And now I can't you know, discuss in this session only about the problem, only about the malicious techniques. Uh, I want to give a spot to the security solutions and see if we are seeing any correlation between what is happening in the, uh, in the this comparison of the malicious techniques to the security solutions. Let's check. Let's review the comparison or the security solutions of uh, malicious package to general malware. So here I spared you the time with you know, referring to all the security solutions like EDR, XDR, MDR, EPP, and uh, you know I didn't explain like each capability here on the slide, and we are just seeing the jumping to the comparison. So, and and I wanted to add here you know the expertise level chain because difference between what is happening in general malware to malicious packages, but happily there isn't such a difference. Security solutions for malicious packets developed very quickly. You know, it's, it's a tax surface that, hap, that is new and uh, is in the last few years we are seeing it emerging. And what we're seeing that is that they built very fast, but not just a quick fix or, you know, something that um, is giving a fair solution. No, they gathered all the information from the past events, from security solutions built for general malware and build something that give a high response time, a high detection rate, and really it, it is a happy thing to see. But of course, you know, general malware, are ma security solutions for general malware are much more mature and you know, they can handle some more edge cases and we can see that with artificial intelligence where 
in general security solution for general malware, it is a very mature thing, which is currently used almost in any uh, security solution. And when we are comparing it to malicious package security solutions, it is in its very beginning currently. And we need to remember it is still, again, a cat and a mouse game of attackers versus the security solutions, which will evolve and will change. And we need to keep on top, as we've seen, attackers will evolve and change their ways in the near future. So I added here another thing that I want to, you know, we've talked a lot about the malicious techniques, about all those malicious stuff and problems. So I want to end with a few, end this session with a few best practices to handle all those malicious packages. So first, deploy a tool to re review or to you know, know from where this package is from. Well, what is the package sources? Verify them. And on the same note, you know, don't install a package without verifying it, without running the assessment. And in addition, one thing that's worth mentioning is give it a delay time. Eventually, it takes you know, a couple of minutes, seconds, or even in some cases, there is need for a security analyst to review what is happening before categorizing it as a malicious package. So don't deploy it to your production, of course, but don't even install it in your uh, uh, development environment before you are running all this assessment. Regarding abandoned package, Either abandon them or, if you can, take them over. And lastly, educate and protect the entire development cycle and start to, starting from the developer themselves. Getting back to the quote from the start of this session, the best way to defeat your enemy is by making him a friend. I hope today you've learned how to defeat this enemy. And this is the mail of uh, the vulnerability research team and my email. Feel free to reach out with any questions you might have. Give you a second to take a picture. And thank you, really. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. On. <laughs> Moving to our Q&A section. Yes. I think you're marking a great point because eventually it is a different attack surface a bit, like it is more focused currently on specific companies or you know companies that are utilizing package, package in package registries and not in general uh, attack surface of general malware where we are seeing um, like you know maybe uh, even countries involved or different stuff. Um, so it, I. I Hope I'm answering your question. The focus it is might be more relevant to organizations, but I think what we are clearly seeing that is that they are more testing stuff, they are more trying stuff, they aren't sure that they even want incentive in some cases, and if they want incentive, they are just using some basic basic techniques or trying, you know, to achieve the MVP to to see how how it's work currently and. This is this is a bit you know funny to see that in f five years development we I expected to see something different already in this year. Yes. So we are using the data that we gathered in the, our our internal supply chain security tool, which is gathering information from mainly NPM and Ruby gems in the last uh, three or four years.
Oh, that, that's a really great question. I, you know, I can try to, to guess a bit, but I don't have this number. We, we, I, I'm not sure that anyone knows a precise number, but I think the vandalism acts that we're seeing, you know, some denial of service or packages that uh, are part of, you know, the, the, the whole integration of the, some companies, it is costing them a lot of man hours times or changing that, uh, clearly infecting and uh, you know costing the, the entire communities uh, money and we are ha adding to that all the crypto miners and stuff that are uh, running quite silently uh, on some machines so it it can be compared again to general malware but there is some uh, um, some money behind that uh, but it can give an, a, a guess even on the number Salsa and SBOM, do you feel that those could be uh, proper ways of helping reduce the risk, or is, um, or is that not applicable to packages? Uh, to reduce the risk via that. Um, so, you know, yes, because you, you, you are seeing the information more and more clearly with these ways. Um, it might take some time if you are depending only on this because you, you want a security solution that evolving very quickly, as I mentioned, and have enough response time. Um, but it is a layer that's uh, helping to, to you know, uh, reviewing this, uh, this um, segment of uh, package registries. Yes. And that's again, you have great questions. Uh, that's, uh, I think this is an issue in the general community. If, if I get to, if I'm understanding your question, if not, let me know. Um, regarding, you know, categorizing all those malicious packages with something similar to vulnerabilities, which we have CVEs currently. That, that's what you meant, yeah. So in the past, uh, Mitra suggested some solution for that, which is the CWE program, I think. If I'm not wrong, or CME program, uh, which uh, felt like uh, they, they stopped uh, using it, stopped supporting it, I think in something like 2008, regarding general malwares. And this is the thing that I think the community need to, to think about. We are thinking currently about it, how we can support it more, uh, the community with uh, categorizing this um, malicious package. Um, this is not an easy task, you know, as I have vulnerabilities because attackers can, as we've seen, 22 malicious packets daily. And, and, and it can, be, and can raise dependent on how the community will uh, focus that. So it is not an easy task to, you know, giving all of those um, ideas related to that. But we currently in our company, we are categorizing it via the hash, uh, which I think is what is happening, you know, in various total and in the general community of malware. But again, this is a great question, which we are currently in the community talking about and seeing if there is a better solution. Yes. Um. Uses what? Sorry. Like, 
So we will clearly see a malicious packets utilizing and exploiting vulnerabilities because, you know, I think even for a, for a proof of concept for attackers, they will want to, to show what they have, what they, what they got. Uh, even if, as I mentioned, it is not the uh, most easiest thing or, you know, the most uh, thing that they earn from that something. Um, so we will see uh, regarding if they'll use, you know, uh, um, very old uh, vulnerabilities from Windows environment or stuff. I think they'll use whatever is easiest and the thing that will that we that they'll can earn the most from that, like spreading more or enhancing their capabilities more, or again showing that they can do something that hurting a company or a product very heavily. Yes. Oh, sorry. I think I have. <laughs> okay, last question. Yeah. I'm, I'm. So package registries currently are doing stuff to you know counter all those things, but 20 malicious packages a day or just on npm is is a lot. So I think we should consider as a community how to you know enhance the, the this uh, method. You know maybe of how easy it is currently to upload malicious packages to to those package registries. You know we just need a mail and quite that that's quite it to upload currently a package for an npm for npm for example. So there is work there, but they are, they are doing their best, I'm sure. So sorry, but we will need to finish the, the session. And really, thank you, everyone. <laughs>